From animals destroying ecosystems to others destroying full continents, let's start with number 14. Imagine a 300-pound beast tearing through your crops, ripping up forests and spreading disease and doing it in the middle of the night. That's the reality with feral hogs. Originally brought to the Americas by explorers like Hernando de Soto in the 1500s for food, some escaped or were released. Later, wild boars were brought in for sport hunting, and they mixed with domestic pigs to form today's super hog. They've spread across at least 35 U.S. states and several other countries. In Texas alone, they cause over $500 million in damage every year, rooting up farmland, destroying fences, and competing with native wildlife. In 2019, a woman in Texas was tragically killed by a pack of feral hogs in her own driveway, and in some rural towns, night vision drone hunts are the only way to keep them in check. Helicopter hunting, boar traps, fertility control governments, and landowners are throwing everything at them. And yes, they're also ending up on the dinner table. Let's move to our waters as we now find zebra mussels. They're sharp, tiny, and clogging everything. Zebra mussels came from Eastern Europe and now infest U.S. lakes and rivers. They attach to boats, power plants, and water pipes causing billions in damage. They also outcompete native mussels and disrupt entire ecosystems. One Michigan utility found zebra mussels choking off a major water intake. That repair cost millions. Prevention is key. Some lakes now require mandatory boat decontamination. Number 12. They were brought in to help, but they became a full-blown disaster. Cane toads were introduced to Australia in the 1930s to control beetles and sugarcane fields. Instead, they ignored the beetles and exploded in number. Cane toads to secrete a potent toxin that kills almost anything that tries to eat them. Native predators like snakes, quokkas, and even crocodiles are dying off. One bite, and they're done. People have tried everything, fencing, traps, even golf clubs. There's a growing movement of citizen hunters who gather them at night using torches. Some scientists are even experimenting with genetic control. Number 11. They leap. They slam into boats, and they've taken over rivers across the U.S. Asian carp were imported in the 1970s to clean aquaculture ponds, but floods allowed them to escape, and they spread like wildfire through the Mississippi River Basin. They outcompete native fish by gobbling up plankton, the base of the aquatic food chain. Okay, in some places, entire fishing economies are collapsing. To stop their spread into the Great Lakes, authorities built electric barriers. Some cities are now hosting commercial fishing competitions and processing them into pet food and fertilizer. Oh, and if you're boating downriver in Illinois, wear a helmet. These carp can rock at 10 feet in the air when startled. Number 10. Want to see a snake eat a deer? Head to the Florida Everglades. These massive pythons, often former pets, now prowl the wetlands. They've eaten their way through nearly all the small mammals in the region. Burmese pythons are native to Southeast Asia, where they live in tropical forests, marshes, and swamps. In the U.S., the fa, they became popular as exotic pets due to their striking patterns and relatively docile nature when young. But there was a problem. They grow. Fast. A cute two-foot hatchling can become a 15- to 20-foot monster in just a few years. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, thousands of these snakes were being imported into the U.S. pet trade every year, many ending up in Florida. Some owners released their pythons into the wild when they got too big to handle or too expensive to feed, Others escaped during storms or poor containment. But the real tipping point may have come in 1992, when Hurricane Andrew tore through South Florida. The storm destroyed homes, buildings, and exotic pet facilities, one of which may have housed dozens of pythons. Those snakes were likely released directly into the nearby Everglades, where the environment was warm, wet, and perfect for their survival. Without natural predators and with abundant food like birds, raccoon. In 2005, a python exploded trying to eat a six-foot alligator. Yes, exploded. These aren't your garden snakes. Florida offers bounties and even a python challenge with cash prizes for the most captured. Hunters stalk them at night with thermal scopes. It's serious business. Next up, the lionfish. They're beautiful. They're elegant. They're deadly. Lionfish look like living fireworks, but they are tearing apart coral reefs across the Atlantic. Originally from the Indo-Pacific, lionfish were likely released from home aquariums. One theory? Hurricane Andrew destroyed a Florida aquarium in 1992, and a few fish slipped into the ocean. They eat anything smaller than them, and they reproduce fast. A single lionfish can lay up to 2 million eggs a year. In parts of the Bahamas, native fish populations dropped by 90%. Divers now hunt lionfish regularly. Spearfishing tournaments are common, and some restaurants are turning them into gourmet dishes. Number 8. Think beaver, but orange-toothed and destructive. Nutria were imported from South America for fur farming. Some escaped or were released when the market crashed. 
These rodents burrow into levees, canals, and wetlands, causing erosion and collapse. In Louisiana, they have turned thousands of acres of marsh into open water. Some parishes pay a bounty for every tail turned in. There's even a new tree rodeo where teams compete to remove as many as possible. And yes, a few daring chefs are trying to make them into tacos. Number 7. Small but relentless, the green crab hitchhiked across oceans in ship ballast water. Now it's eating clams, mussels, and young fish from Maine to Tasmania. It also destroys eelgrass beds, critical nurseries for marine life. In Maine, clam harvesters saw their livelihoods vanish as green crabs took over. Some chefs now cook them into bisques. Meanwhile, tribal nations in the Pacific Northwest are helping lead removal efforts with targeted trapping. Number 6. If you've ever seen a bird evict another from its nest, it might have been a mina. These birds were introduced to control pests but quickly became the problem. They're aggressive, outcompeting native birds for space and food. They even destroy eggs and young. In India, they're called bird mafia. In Australia, they've been declared a national pest. Efforts include trapping, public awareness, and even redesigning bird boxes to keep them out. Number 5. They don't sting. They're tiny. But together, they're a juggernaut. Argentine ants came from South America and have formed vast super colonies in Europe, the U.S., and beyond. They overwhelm native ants, disrupt pollination, and protect crop pests like aphids. In California, one colony stretches from San Diego to San Francisco. That's hundreds of miles of unified ant cooperation. Researchers are testing biological controls fungi, bait systems, even ant-specific viruses. Number four, it bellows like a tuba and eats everything that moves. The American bullfrog is the heavyweight champ of ecological destruction. Native to the U.S. East, bullfrogs have invaded the West, Europe, Asia, you name it. They gobble up insects, fish, birds, and smaller frogs. They also carry chytrid fungus, which has devastated amphibians worldwide. In the West, native species like the red-legged frog are vanishing fast. Some regions now trap bullfrogs aggressively. Others are encouraging frog legs on the menu. Breaking into the top three. These snails are massive up to 8 inches long and eat over 500 plant species. They chew through plaster and stucco, damaging homes. Worst of all, they carry rat lungworm, a parasite dangerous to humans. In Florida, infestations led to quarantines and the removal of over 100,000 snails in a single outbreak. The state deployed pesticide squads and trained dogs to sniff them out. They're slow, but if you wait too long, they'll take over everything. Second place, brown tree snakes the silent nightmares in Guam. When U.S. military cargo brought brown tree snakes to Guam after World War II, no one thought much of it. Until the birds started disappearing. The snakes thrived in a land with no natural predators. They wiped out nearly every native bird on the island. Some species are now extinct in the wild. These snakes even cause power outages by climbing utility poles. Guam averages hundreds of snake-related blackouts every year. Authorities have tried snake-sniffing dogs and even dropped poisoned mice by parachute. It sounds extreme, but in this fight, every strategy is on the table. And finally, at number one, the top spot goes to the feral cat. They purr, they cuddle. But in the wild, feral cats are apex predators. Worldwide, they've contributed to the extinction of over 60 species. In places like Australia, they kill millions of native animals every night. Small marsupials, reptiles, birds. Nothing is safe. Efforts to trap, neuter, and release cats haven't worked everywhere. Some areas have even resorted to culling. It's controversial, but conservationists argue that native wildlife has no defense against these stealthy hunters. So yeah, after hearing about cane toads getting smacked with golf clubs and pythons eating alligators, you might be wondering, why is this happening so often? And why does it feel like there are more and more of these invasions every year? First off, we've connected the entire planet. Planes, boats, shipping containers, you name it. Every single day, thousands of them are crisscrossing the globe. And guess what? Tiny hitchhikers love a free ride. We're talking insects and cargo, snails stuck to crates, frogs hiding in bananas. And then there's the exotic pet trade. We've all seen that one friend with the giant snake or the weird little monkey. These animals seem cool until they grow too big, get loose, or people realize they can't afford to feed a meat-eating lizard the size of a toddler. So what happens? People dump them, or they escape. Either way, they're out there now and breeding. Climate change is making it all easier. Warmer winters mean more tropical species can survive in places they never could before. Like parts of the southern U.S. used to be too cold for some of these invaders. Now, it's practically a resort for them. We're cutting down forests, paving over grasslands, building suburbs into marshes. And that's stressing out native species. They're not built for change like that. But invasive species, they're the scrappy take-over-your-house types. They thrive in chaos. So, yeah, between all that and the fact that some of these invaders don't have any natural predators in their new homes, it's the perfect storm. And the next big invasive animal? 
it might already be here, just waiting to blow up.